An infinite loop occurs when the flow of a program enters a loop and never gets out of the loop. Meaning, every time the condition that controls the loop is evaluated, the condition always evaluates to true and the body of the loop is executed. While infinite loops are sometimes intentionally implemented, when they exist in code as a bug, they can result in your program exhausting the CPU. The existence of infinite loops as bugs in code can crash your program or even crash your computer altogether. So when writing loop statements, be cautious not to write an infinite loop unintentionally. Here's the syntax of various infinite loops. Now this is not the only way to make an infinite loop. For example, in this while statement, the body of the loop will be entered because i is initialized to 4 and 4 is less than 5 when the while statement is initially executed. In the body of the while statement, i is decremented using the decrement operator. The second iteration of the while loop, i will be equal to 3 and the third, it will be equal to 2. So in this case, i will always be less than 5 because in each iteration of the while statement, i continues to be decremented. This would likely be an unintentional infinite loop and ultimately one that could cause some problems. If we copy this code into Eclipse and add a print line statement in the body of the well statement, we can get a visual representation of what exactly happens in the case of an infinite loop. Running this program, you see the print line statement will continue to execute until we forcefully terminate the program using the red square stop button here. As mentioned, there are times an infinite loop is intentionally implemented. However, intentional infinite loops must contain a terminating statement as even intentional infinite loops need to be exited eventually. For example, here's an example of an intentional infinite loop using pseudocode. Pseudocode is used here as it will hopefully provide a better understanding of the necessity of an intentional infinite loop. Here is the basic logic of a server used to process data requests and responses. Here, when the program that controls the server begins, an invariable is initialized to 1. Next, the flow continues to the infinite while loop which essentially can be translated to well true because the invariable server is never manipulated and will always equal 1, meaning the body of the loop will continue to be executed. And in this case, the server will continue to wait for input in order to send response data back to the client. Now, as mentioned earlier, intentional infinite loops must still contain a terminating statement, which means technically this isn't really an infinite loop, but it is often called and considered one, so we will consider it one for now. Another example of using an intentional infinite loop is the loop used to render frames in a video game. As long as the game is being played, the infinite loop continues to render a specific amount of frames per second until the game is exited. True infinite loops are commonly errors in code and can result in a crash, so be cautious when constructing a loop and verify each loop has some kind of terminating statement implemented.